I decided to convert this mini metal lathe to be CNC, so I started to disassemble all the manual controls on it. I traded out the lead screws for ball screws, and don't ask me why I used this piece of stock to make this part, but I did it. This will couple the x-axis ball screw to the cross slide, and I had to mill the bottom valley of the cross slide to make clearance. And all the other parts were very precariously milled on the lathe. And this is the carriage cross slide assembly with the NEMA 2.3 motor. And I function tested it with an Arduino. And I used a NEMA 3.4 motor for the Z-axis. And I used a PC case for the electronics enclosure because I thought it would look cool. But I should have just got an industrial enclosure because it was quite a pain to work in that small area. I'm running Linux CNC on this Dell Optiplex 740 that I found on Craigslist. I built an enclosure for the electronics and the computer, and it has two filtered fans, and the electronics PC case has fans, and the Dell computer has a fan. So there's a lot of airflow. I wanted the electronics to be completely isolated from vibrations from the lathe, so I built this cantilevered shelf off the wall and tested it. And I threw some LED lights in there just for fun. Finally, it lives. It's doing a dry run of a chess pawn program written in Fusion 360 and using the Axis GUI that comes with Linux CNC. I wanted to read in the lathe spindle speed, so I made this pulse index gear on the lathe. I used the cutoff wheel of the Dremel mounted in the milling attachment to grind the notches in the gear. The holes in the lathe back gear were used for the indexing. Here's the gear mounted on the mini lathe and mounted with the pulse index sensors. I attempted to make a chip guard out of duct tape. It did not work. And so I bought one and modified it to make it fit. I made this little shelf for the cutting tools and hand tools and it can slide off the bench and go onto the wall when I'm not using it. With the initial setup complete, it was time to turn the very first part, which is this chess pawn. The learning curve was very steep, but after about 14 revisions to the G-code program and changing the cutting tool geometry and crashing the lathe many times, it finally started to get a little bit better. Dimensionally, the pieces were very accurate and repeatable. It helped reduce the monotony of making pawns. And this is making a chess king, and I was using the shop vac as a dust collector, but I forgot to turn it on for this piece, that's why there's so much sawdust everywhere. And doing very little sanding by hand, the surface finish for off the cutting tool is pretty good. This wood is Bacote for the black pieces. And of course, one king was beheaded by tool number two. And this is boring out the top of the rook. The crenellation cuts were still made with the Dremel on the big lathe.